Welcome to the Style Sports Hub, presented by Van Ganaway Chevrolet. Hey everyone, welcome to the Sports Hub Podcast, presented by Van Ganaway Chevrolet. I'm your host, Kyle Coppola. Thanks for joining us today. I want to give a huge shout out to our partners that make this podcast happen. Lake Center Home Care, Lake Sumter State College, Lastaware Insurance and Auto Owners Insurance, and of course, Van Ganaway Chevrolet. This podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and every other podcast site you can think of. And today we're going to be talking with Tavares Middle School Cross Country Team, and uh, we got a couple of state medalists that are going to be uh, that we're going to be talking to and we're also going to be talking to coach Kevin Von Maxey and that's my first guest today Kevin welcome to the program thank you really appreciate uh, having me on we're excited to talk about our, our team and uh, these kids so uh, for those who don't know you um, you've been involved with cross country in the area for a very long time uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, how long you've been involved with the Tavares uh, middle school uh, cross country team uh, awesome. Well, yeah. So um, I grew up in Tavares. My wife and I both are Tavares High School grads. We both ran for Tavares High School, uh, cross country and track. Um, so we, we kind of grew up and we went off to college, came back and uh, started the Tavares Middle School cross country program and the Lake County Schools uh, cross country program um, about 21 years ago. So um, we, we had a team that we started off as a running club about 20, 21 years ago. And then after that, we were able to develop it, compete in meets against other schools, get other schools involved, and uh, create what we know as Lake County Middle School Cross Country today. So it's been about 20 years. Yeah, and it's, it's building each and every year. Um, uh, how, before you were co- coaching, you were running for Tavares High School. Yeah. Um, did, did you end up uh, running in college at all, or uh, did you end up uh, – what, what, did, what did you do before you were the coach? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so um, I did uh, go to the University of Central Florida. I did not run in college. I was a, a good runner, um, probably a little bit better in track, actually, as a hurdler uh, than I was overall <laughs> um, as a cross-country runner. I did run in the 17s, was, uh, but not like a state-level champion runner or anything like that. My wife was a district champion runner, um, more of a middle-distance runner and sprinter. She was a district champion in the 400. Um, so we kind of combined all of our, our talents and kind of combined what we know about all these different distances to put it together to create like our programs today and you and your wife actually you coach together so you're not just uh you know you're not just together you also coach together which is a really cool thing you talk about that dynamic between you two yeah it's great it's it's my absolute favorite thing about coaching is the fact that i get to go to work every single day and coach with my wife um she's a phenomenal coach she does a lot of stuff um behind the scenes and she's like the end of my yang so i I create a lot of the 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 race programs and kind of have the general direction of, of the program and she does a lot of the numbers and um some of the things behind the scenes and helps me with uh, the programs as well. So it's, uh, it's really cool to be able to do that every single day with your wife. We get along super well, and um, there's a great balance there. She also provides like a voice that um, to, to some of the kids on the team. The fact that we coach our boys and girls together is a very important part of what we do, and the fact that she's there as a different voice every single day is important. She's very close with the kids as well, and I wish she could be here today, but she couldn't be here today. So, um, But yeah, that's, uh, it, it's, it's definitely the highlight of, of what I do is to be able to, to go to work with her every single day and coach with her. Her. Yeah, we always see when your guys are posting on social media. Yeah. She's in all the photos and everything like that. She does a, a really good job with the program. And you, you guys had one stellar season this year. You yeah, talk about you. the year that you guys had. You went. Uh, you were state champions. Yeah. You went. And you competed at nationals this year. Yeah. Talk about the season. Yeah. So um, coming off of last season, um, we had one of the we had the best girls middle school team of all time in Florida last year, and we sent every single one of those girls up to the high school level, including the national champion Cheyenne Thomas. Um, she won nationals last year in Louisville, Kentucky, and we sent them all up. So our expectations, you know, are remain high for us. But I think around the state, a lot of other people did not expect um, our girls team to to do as well as they did. Our our boys team, we knew we were bringing back a lot of young talent that um, had medaled and done well at state. And um, you don't really know what you have until you get to that first race. And we trained really hard. Um, we had a great track season last year. We had a really great summer program this year. So going into that first race of the season, um, we won our first race. And then as the season progressed, we saw our girls especially – grow and the depth on our boys side grow where we were bringing in a lot of sixth and seventh graders that were doing very well running some elite times and so as that happened we started winning um pretty big invitationals we were able to compete and um sweep the lake county championships and then uh compete at the state level and a lot of great teams over 300 schools participate in the state of florida every single year um private charter um and public schools and um 
it, it's very difficult to win a state championship in middle school because everyone's running in the same division. So um, we got there. We had a race plan, and we thought that maybe our girls, if they had the perfect day, they could win it. And they just had an amazing day. Everyone ran their PRs that day, and and uh, they were able to pull off a brand new team, winning the state championship. Just absolutely amazing. Our boys, same thing. Our boys team this year ended up being the fastest public school team in the history of middle school cross country wow. here in Florida. So um, just a really great season. It's never been done before where uh, the boys and girls team from the same school have won state championship. It's very hard to win one. Um, so to have your boys and your girls win a state championship the same year is um it's it's definitely awesome and, and these kids are amazing and so um i definitely want to thank all the people that were involved in that first of all i, w- I want to thank our principal our principal abby crosby at various middle school she's a huge proponent of our program she does great with that um jimmy phillips who's an athletic dir- i mean he's the ad over um athletics he does a great job and our athletic director ashley metz they're all huge supporters mm-hmm. of our program and um, I, I definitely want to thank them because none of that would have happened um, if we didn't have their support. And of course the parents Absolutely. are insane. They're so amazing. Anything we ask them to do, they do. They put a lot of into their children. Of course the kids are amazing. Um, so if I could talk about those kids real fast, oh, I want to mention course, them because they definitely deserve uh, their names <laughs> on the podcast. So, uh, so our captain you're going to meet here in a second from the girl's side, that's Sophia Maldonado. And then we have Lakin Hartley. Lakin won, I think, seven races this year. She never won a race before this year. She trained very hard over the, the summer and during the season and came in, won the first race of the season, and then had a, a streak of races where she won like six in a row, and she won a few others. Um, we had Isabella Neal, a sixth grader, and Lindsay Mishler, uh, both sixth graders, phenomenal, two of the fastest sixth graders in the state of Florida. They had a great season, and Jimena Navagarcia, who also won a race for us. And then Desiree Huffman and um, Jillian Hernandez rounded out our varsity team that won a state championship. And on our boys' side, you're going to meet uh, Nick Alvarez, um, or Nicholas, as his mom calls him. <laughs> um, and he was, um, he was one of our top runners and, and our captain as well. And then our top runner at state was Omar Castillo, also a seventh grader. We have actually a pretty young team, and I think they might have a chance to go back and, and challenge it for it next year as well. We have Eric Chen and Liam Elia, uh, Nick, um, Nate Malloy, and also uh, the twins, Navid and Emiliano Lozano. So, um, just a phenomenal season with them. And uh, I would also want to mention a couple of our, our medalists as well in the JV race, which was Helen Robertson. And then uh, the winner of the boys' JV race was um, Seth Mannion, and second place was Tajir Neal. So we, uh, we cleaned up, we swept the awards, and our boys' JV team also won the state championship. So it was pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah, it was a terrific season. We talked a little bit about it. We wrote some stories about it. And um, j- just really great to see that uh, in, in the community. And you mentioned something, too, about being the number one public school. And I, I wanted to touch on that a little bit as well. Being a public school, is, is it more difficult to compete as far as uh, track? And field and, and cross country would go uh, as far as that would be? I would say uh, for sure. I, I watched your podcast with Cody Atkinson a couple weeks ago. He's doing a great job in Mount Dora. And I, he said a very similar um, kind of response to this similar question. And the reason why is just because you can't recruit, um, you know, and uh, there are people who will go all over the state, even at the middle school level now. Um, we see what's going on in the college with NIL. We see kids moving schools all the time in different sports for high school. Mm-hmm. It's, it's trickled all the way down to the middle school level now. Wow. And some of the top schools in the uh, state of Florida and high school level, Bell and Jesuits, Bowles, their you know, K-12 schools are 6 through 12 schools. So they want to start recruiting that talent and start developing them in sixth grade because if you are an excellent sixth grade runner in a K-12 through school, you can run at the state level for the high school team. You know, Pinecrest had a, um, a group of, of girls that ran for about seven years. They won their first state championship, um, and this is Pinecrest in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Um, they won the first state championship, and four of the five girls were in the middle school level. Uh, Dillard High School this year have two seventh grade girls on their state championship team. So we're starting to see you know schools going all the way down to the middle school level to to start to recruit and start to attract interest. Um, so how do, you, how do you feel about that though? <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I mean, you like it, that or no? I mean, I don't. Yeah. I don't like it. Obviously, yeah. I mean, it's it's tough, but I think it's a generation that we, we live in. We see kids move schools. Um, all the time, two or three times for for different sports. Um, mm-hmm. I understand everyone has to do what's best for them, but I'm kind of an old school guy when it comes to that. I, I you know I would like to see opportunities where you get together and you build something. I think the message that we send sometimes um, is not the right message because sometimes you have to go through some adversity, and then when you get to the other side of that adversity and you you do something special together, I think you really learn a lot about yourself. Now, again, everyone's different, and there's definitely situations where I I understand why people move and -hmm. and do what they need to do, but um, at the end of the day, um, I'll just use my own self as an example. My junior year um, at Tavares, um, I played soccer, 
And um, I think we were like three and 13, you know, my junior year. And a lot of people could have left schools um, and went to other schools in the area. This is a long time ago, you know, 90s yeah. is what I'm talking about. But, uh, but we didn't. We all stayed together. We made us work harder. We, uh, we played soccer year round. And then we ended up winning the district championship, you know, my senior year. So um, that's a very fulfilling, rewarding experience that I remember. And, um, you know, I think that those kind of experiences um, can parlay into real life situations. So, to answer your question, it is more difficult, I think, a lot of times to win at uh, public schools, to be competitive because kids are, are leaving all the time and can recruit. But at the same uh, time, I think there are some advantages there. Sometimes our schools are a little bit bigger than the other schools, and uh, that can help. But but you've also had a ton of success. Let's not uh, let's not knock the public school system because yeah. I mean I, you've sent kids to Division One programs from the Tavares Middle School programs as well, which is really cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I appreciate that. And there's really a lot of people involved in that. Um, we're thankful, and the only thing that I think we can take credit for is that we started their careers. We helped start their careers. Um, you know, but the kids do the work, and then the high school coaches have to do their work as well. Um, but we've had uh, 16 kids run in, in college, uh, 12 of them at the Division One level on scholarship. Wow. Um, I'll just say some names out there. So <laughs> Riley Novak is one, went to a couple different high schools, and he's at the University of Florida. Noah Musselwhite is at the University of Florida. Matthew Rossi is at Clemson University. Um, I think our first one we had was uh, Quentin Schaefer went to Iowa. I think that was like 2009. He ran for Iowa. Um, we have um, Cassandra Montalvo who ran at South Florida. Um, Shabli Schreffler at Memphis. Um, Mississippi State was um, Savannah Schwab. Tim Fieser who ran at West Georgia and uh, uh, finishing up his last season. And then a lot of other people who ran at like Division II and uh, community colleges. Um, my own son who ran at Lyon, uh, Taylor Von Maxey. And, um, you know, there's there's several more that are out there, too. We're really proud of being able to help them fall in love with running and find an opportunity to go and run in high school. But certainly there are a lot of other people that are involved in, in you know, their journey yeah. on the way. But we stay in touch with a lot of them, and uh, we're really proud of them, obviously. That's awesome. You've had a lot of memories, of course, uh, yeah. as well. Did, did any memories stick out more than, than any other ones? you have any good stories uh, that you've uh, been a part of uh, during your time as the coach for – the Tavares Middle School. We could probably be here forever. I mean, so many good memories. This was a great memory this year. I think maybe my favorite memory, and this is tough because there's so many memories that are out there, but I think one that really sticks out for me was the 2014 team. Uh, the 2014 was an uh, amazing team, and um, we um, have a running club that we run as when we're not in school. It's called Red Sea Running Club, and we compete. And we took that running club. Uh, the girls' team was um, state runners-up that year for Tavares Middle School in 2014. We took that team up during the Thanksgiving break to run at Foot Locker Nationals. And they, don't, they no longer have a middle school Foot Locker National race. We play second in that race. And what the memories are really about family, about friendships, about spending time together. And we spent uh, an entire week together over Thanksgiving break. We went up to the Blue Ridge Parkway. It was snowing. It was the first time the kids had seen wow. snow. We made snow angels and had snow fights. And, and that is a memory that sticks out. is one of my best memories. So. That, that's cool because it's not, it's not just about sports all the time. It's about building the character with these kids as well. And uh, that, that's another question. I wanted to ask as far as, uh, as as the experience with your students, how do you balance the education and the athlete, uh, athletics together? Because I, they, it seems like you guys train a lot. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I mean, they're waking up in the morning. Some of them are running. Some of them run in the afternoons. But how do you balance that all with them? Well, we always tell them we're a teacher first and we're a coach second. You know, So I've been a teacher longer than I've been a coach. And I teach seventh grade language arts. My wife's also a teacher. So that's the easy part, actually, is to making sure that they're doing what they need to in the classroom. And mm -hmm. the kids need extra help all the time. We pull them in for a tutoring one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, the kids will tell you that I'm texting their parents and I'm talking <laughs> to them about their grades all the time, uh, making sure that they're staying on track. Because that's a really important part, yeah. right? They're student athletes. So mm -hmm. um, the balance is difficult um, for some of the kids because – it does take a lot of their time, but um, I'm really proud to say that last year we had like 65 kids on our team, every single one of them academically eligible, not one kid that was um, academically ineligible. That's cool. And so that's what it's all about. And they work hard because they love each other and they want to be there for each other. So they make sure their grades, for the most part, are pretty good. So that way they can uh, compete on the team. So how would you uh, how would you sum up this year overall for you guys? I mean, obviously you you guys literally. I mean, you won the state championships. You went and competed at nationals. I mean, uh, th this has got to be one of your most successful seasons that you've ever had. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, you do this for two decades, and you have so many success stories and so many. You know, like 
just great memories of everything. And this is yeah. this is when it comes to being on paper, this is the best because you can't get any better than winning a boys and a girls state championship. <laughs> so just um, obviously a great season. But I think what makes this um, season amazing was the the involvement of the community and and, and, the, and the parents um, and and the and the runners. They give so much. I don't think people really understand that we run our middle school program exactly like it's a high-end um, high school program. I mean, we know what the other high school programs do in the area and in the state of Florida, having been involved with running for 30 years now. And um, we treat it exactly like it's um, a state champion high school team. And so it takes a lot of involvement for people, especially parents, to do that. But if we say, hey, parents, we need to, we want to go to this race, we want to go here, we want to drive there, the parents are always willing to do that. The community mm-hmm. is always behind us. And so it's been a wonderful season, and I just appreciate the community support and the support that we have from our school and um, from our parents and from our runners because they go all in and, and they deserve all the credit that they, they've earned. Yeah, especially going to nationals. We were talking before yeah. the show, actually, about that and how, how, how they were able to go to nationals and some of them needed some help to get up there but some of them flew up there yeah. some of them drove uh but they all got up there yeah. and you guys competed and uh you finished second at nationals i believe yeah we did so um we competed at nationals not as Tavares middle school but as our separate running club um that is red sea running club and mm-hmm. that's um our running club that my wife and i have it's only for Tavares kids we don't allow anyone else in that and it's free that's another thing too is my wife do a lot of this um we do it for free we don't we don't do it we don't ask anything in return you know because we really want to see the kids have success in life yeah. so we took um the Red Sea Running Club. Uh, we took them up to Louisville, Kentucky. Last year we went. We won the national championship. Um, this year we ran f- uh, faster times this year. Um, and we're able to beat almost all the teams in the nation this year. Um, we, we came in second to uh, the Colorado State Championship team. but we wow. uh, and, and the girls' side and I think the boys' side, I think we um, were behind the Indiana State Championship team. So it was very close. We almost won national championship. Second overall in the country, though. I think we'll take that every single time. So. <laughs> Absolutely. But to get 16, 18 kids to go up there to Louisville, Kentucky, mm-hmm. um, like you said, parents flying up there and, and driving their kids and, and just a, like a big family. We call it Tavares family um, to get all those kids to go up there and, and compete like that was just that's that's yeah. just an amazing experience. That, again, some of these kids never left the state of Florida and they're running um, up in another state. It's just something that they're going to remember the rest of their lives. And that's what it's all about. Uh, and uh, we we uh, it's so cool that what you're doing for Tavares and uh, we love to see it. And congratulations on a terrific sure season. That. Seriously, we're gonna we're gonna be uh, talking to some other uh, students coming up. In fact. We're going to be talking to Sofia Maldonado. She's one of those state champions that we'll be talking to coming up next. Thanks again for your time. Thanks, Kyle. Appreciate it. Are you in need of a new car or truck? Then zoom into Van Genaway Chevrolet, a company that has always been driven by superior customer service. Van Genaway Chevrolet is your hometown good folk Chevrolet dealer. The dealership has helped generations of Lake County families find the perfect car, truck, or SUV. After 37 years and thousands of Chevrolets sold, Van Ganaway has learned a lot about their customers. They don't want to be pressured and they don't need a gimmick or giveaway. They just want fair prices and a great overall car buying experience. If you've had bad experiences purchasing automobiles elsewhere, then switch gears and try Van Ganaway Chevrolet. Chances are you'll end up being a part of the ever growing family of satisfied and loyal customers. Check out Van Ganaway Chevrolet at VGChevy.com or call them today at 352 343 2400. Van Ganaway Chevrolet, find new roads. We are back here on the Sports Hub Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Coppola. Thanks for joining us uh, today. We are here talking with Sofia Maldonado. Sofia is a uh, state medalist f- for the uh, the junior high school program and middle school program at Tavares High School. Sofia, welcome to the program. Hello. Hello, yeah. Um, so you uh, you were a captain on the team. Um, you were made captain this year. You're an eighth grader. Can you tell us a little bit about your year and, and how things went? Uh, this year is probably my greatest year I've had. Um, I got in the low 11s, 1143. And I feel like this year um, was a special year because it was my last year and I did my best. And I was on varsity. I won my first race and set a course record. We were a state champion team for boys and girls. And we were nationals runners up for girls in awesome. public schools. And overall, we were third 
in the nation for girls. That's so cool. And how, how long have you been running for? You, you've been running for a while? Yeah, I've been running since sixth grade. Oh, so since sixth grade. So you, you've kind of had the experience and kind of uh, kind of been able to do it. And how, What was it like crossing the finish line at states, knowing that you're a state champion? That must have been amazing. Yes, it was. I was, um, when I crossed, I went, oh, I started crying because I had really good PR. Yeah. And I went over to the side and my dad came running over and he had the results out already. And we were, had our first five before anyone else. And we were winning at the point. And then when I think like when the boys are starting, um, we checked and we won by like 40 points. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And you won and uh, you, you have a bunch of medals here, yeah. too. Uh, what, what were these medals? You, you got um, them down here. Yeah. That, so that's cool. What's that blue one right there? It's my state's medal. I got 16th overall for that's the awesome. girls. And then this one right here was the one I set a course record on. It's Mineola Invitational. I got first and set the girls' course record for that school. Wow. This one was our home Invitational race. Um, I got first in it. It was a little bit complicated because at the end, I think <laughs> me and one of my friends, Bibs, got switched up. So it said that she won, but we got all better, and I won that race. Then this one was our good luck race. I got second. And it had, there was this, so our motto is we are seven. And so there was a cloud that had a shape of a seven. And at that moment, I knew that we were going to, we had a chance to win states because that was our good luck this That's year. That's so cool. And then you also uh, have this. Talk about this right over here. This is probably one of the ones you're probably most proud about right yeah, here. Yeah, that's our nationals um, trophy that we won for second place. Um, we did amazing at that race. I PR'd by like four minutes because last year I got like 21s. This year I got 16, 15, I think. And that one, we for boys and girls, we both got second for public schools. And that one's like amazing race. That is so cool. And how how is the like the community responded to you guys? I mean, you you come back and um, I, I know a lot of people are just really excited for you guys. I, yeah. mean, that, that, I don't think that had ever happened that you guys did that well at nationals and uh, to be a part of a team like that. I mean, that, it must have been incredible. Yes, yeah, it was. It must have um, been a great experience for you. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any uh, people on the team, any any uh, friends on the team that uh, that really stick out this year? Maybe that that helped you push through when mm -hmm. times got tough. So the first race, one of my friends, Lakin Hartley, uh, she won the first race, and that's so. In seventh grade, she came in really good. She moved from Indiana. She was um, running too, and so she came in um, seventh grade year, and she was ahead of me, and I was a little bit mad because I didn't want someone to be ahead of me. So that year I started getting faster and faster. And then at the first race this year, um, Windy Hill Invitational, I was right behind her. I was like six in the beginning, but then like I'm really good at hills and it was a hilly course. And so that race I got up and was right like right behind maybe five seconds. She's a really good sprinter, so I know I can't <laughs> out sprinter, so I'd be like 100 meters ahead of her. But then – there, I was like, oh, maybe I have a chance to beat her. And then I kept on trying and trying. And then finally at Mineola, that one race that I got school re the school record, um, I beat her. She did fall at the beginning, so but to vary, she didn't. But she didn't beat me, and I beat her. Cool. Um, and so at Mineola, I was maybe like 10th place at the beginning. Then when the hills came, I passed a lot of people, maybe on the first lap around the bus part where we went around the buses um the first girl was Annalise Galarza on East Ridge and I got in front of her and then I stayed in front of everyone for like the rest of the race and I was ahead by nine seconds from is the that, first girl is that one of your best memories this yeah, year? yeah that is <laughs> That's one of your favorite memories uh one more question I have for you you have any role models out there that uh that you love uh, as far as runners go or or maybe it's a family member that you have out there. Who, who, who's, who's your role model? My mom. She oh. pushed me through a lot of stuff. Like um, track season was a big thing for um, MDCA, I think. That was a race. She was cheering me on. She brought um, a bunch of family members, like my aunt. She came over, and they cheered me on, and I was really happy. And that's the uh, of course, I qualified. I got 11:57, and I qualified for track. And then she drove me to all these races. I went to all the races this year, yeah. and flew me all the way up to Kentucky. Wow, 
That's that's awesome. You know, and, it drove uh, me up all the way from Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> and she she's here. She's off camera right now. But uh, but mom, that's awesome. That's uh, that's terrific. Uh, uh, awesome dedication uh, to you as well. And uh, congratulations on a great season. And uh, remember the name Sophia Maldonado. She's going to be doing some real good things at the high school level. I think so. Uh, yeah, a terrific season. And uh, congratulations on your uh, second place at uh, nationals. Thank you. Awesome. Coming up next, we'll talk to some more to various athletes on the sports hub. Nobody wants an aging family member who is unable to care for themselves to be home alone. Lake Center Home Care believes the best healing happens when you are most comfortable. The company provides exceptional personal care in the comfort and privacy of your own home. Whether you need skilled nursing, physical therapy, home health aids, or companion services, your loved ones will enjoy peace of mind knowing you're being taken care of and treated with respect and dignity. Lake Center Home Care is locally owned and managed with a team of highly qualified professionals who are passionate about taking care of their neighbors. Call 352-315-0050 or visit golchc.com to learn more about this amazing company. All right, we are back here on the Sports Hub Podcast. My name is Kyle Coppola. Thanks for joining us today. It's been a lot of fun talking to the Tavares Middle School uh, students and uh, Coach Vaughn Maxey as well. Right now, we are joined by Nicholas Alvarez. Nick, you're a seventh grader at Tavares Middle School. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, you had a terrific year this year. Um, you you came in first t- place in states, uh, and then you ended up going to nationals, which we have the trophy right here. Talk about your season. It, it must have been a terrific year for you. Yes, it was. Um, the season was fine. It was great, actually. Um, I had a lot of fun running with this team. Yeah. And uh, sharing a lot of great moments with this group of boys and this team, creating a bond with this team. It was fun. We got to do a lot of fun things throughout the season, and we got to do things we couldn't do. Um, a lot of pushing each other and PRs. What, uh, what was your favorite thing, would you say, that you got to do with the team this year? My favorite thing that, got, that I got to do with the team was uh, go to Brevard camp in north carolina it was pretty fun going up there and running with them creating the bond stronger that's cool and what did you do up there with the with the team you just kind of ran up there what did you do were you able to do certain activities up there yeah there was some um team building activities we could do up there with the team and we ran against the other high schoolers up there too that's that's awesome. And then uh, Coach Von Maxey, you you've been running. I guess uh, we were talking before the show. You've been running for a, a year or two now. Um, how did you get into running? And and how how has Coach Von Maxey sort of impacted you as far as far as running? Well, I started running back in second grade at Asatula Elementary with Coach Boyd. He has a program called the Walk and Jog, and then. From there, I ran a race called the um, Patriot Mile Challenge, which was hosted by Coach April and Kevin Von Maxey. And from that race, it kind of like he kind of pulled me off, and he was like, "You're a good runner, so you should come run with us." And then I went to my the first practice and kind of just started there. And he's really a big impact on me because without him, I wouldn't be here right now. That's awesome. And and you obviously were able to to have a terrific season. He coached you up really good, and that allowed you to uh, to, to to medal at states. Talk about the states and and getting that uh, that medal at states. What did that feel like? That must have felt really good for you. It felt very good knowing that. All our hard work paid off for that very moment, and the group of boys there was pretty good. Felt amazing. What was the trip like up up to the nationals too? Because you ended up uh, traveling up there. Um, that that must have been amazing to compete with the best runners in the country. Because yeah. it, it's probably a little bit different than states, I would imagine. Yeah. Oh well, um, it, was, it was good. The trip. I was kind of nervous going up there, but overall, I was proud. Because my mom was saying, like, you didn't, like, you ran against state champions from all over the state. You should be proud of yourself. So awesome. I took that to heart. I'm like, yeah, 
should be proud of myself. Yeah, you yeah, and and you you were proud. You went up. You you secured a runner up trophy for for the for, for them up there, and uh, just a, just a terrific season for you. Uh, do you have any role models that you look up to? Uh, who who who's your role model? My parents, because they push me every day. They're there. They take me to practices and the races. They're cheering me on every day, telling me to believe in myself, push yourself, don't give up. They're always there at the finish line, waiting for me. And then you, you're obviously fairly new as far as running for for kids that are just looking to get into running. What would your advice be to them? Don't give up, even when times are hard. Believe in yourself always, and. Push yourself to the limits. You can do this. You got this. You got this. Yeah. <laughs> and you got this, too, because yeah. uh, you got a beautiful second-place trophy at Nationals. You did a, a terrific year, and uh, we can't wait to see what uh, what eighth grade brings. I think you're uh, you're going to obviously train up, and we, we're, we're excited to see what uh, what Nick Alvarez can bring to the uh, Lake County community. Thank you so much for coming on to the program Thanks. today. Thank you, too. Appreciate you. We're going to come back in just a moment and wrap things up on the Sports Hub next. Back here on the Sports Hub podcast, thank you for joining us. We had a lot of fun talking to Tavares Middle School today. Thank you to our partners, Van Ganaway Chevrolet, Lake Center Home Care, Lake Sumter State College, Last Aware, and Auto Owners Insurance, and everybody who makes the Sports Hub possible. We'll see you on the next edition of the Sports Hub podcast. This has been the Style Sports Hub, presented by Van Ganaway Chevrolet.